and welcome to The Apprentice. You're fired. It's week eight in Lord Sugar's search for his business partner. Half the candidates have gone, so tonight we'll be casting a critical eye over the rest who are left in the fight for that quarter of a million pound investment. If you watched last week, it seemed that strategy, strategy, strategy was the way to succeed in business. This week's catchphrase was a lot more honest about which quality is most important, though. Only time when I saw Tom in deep trouble was when he had lost pure evil. The loss of Pure Evil was a big mistake. Yeah. Love me, thank you, Pure Evil, thank and you. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Take care. There you go, Pure Evil. That's all you need to win The Apprentice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just throw the good virtues away. As ever, we had a potent mix of people on the panel. Gallery owner Lawrence Alkin, comedian Sarah Milliken, and art collector and financial guru Alvin Hall. Welcome to your fired. <laughs> Tonight's task of selling urban art led to one candidate being given the brush off. Laura, you think you're a good salesperson. You're certainly a very good talker. Yeah. I'm not totally convinced that you should remain in the process. So, Laura, you're fired. Take care. Please welcome Laura Hogg. How are you? There's two things that you've just immediately off that. It was a bit where you went, you're certainly good talk, and you went, yeah. <laughs> uh, if nothing is going to talk me out of this. Uh, and then take care. No one has ever said, take care now. Uh, safe home. You people look after yourselves on your way home. I know, I know. I think it's just one of these situations where you need to think, oh, yeah, didn't really know what to say. The bit that stuck with it's important. Was, take care now, bye now. <laughs> like your aunt leaving or something like that. Don't be a stranger. Uh, the, I know, I know. The, uh, what, did you think it was going to happen? Did you think? I think so, yeah. Um, I think you see it all over my face, to be honest with you. I think I'd lost that little bit of oomph in me in that final boardroom. And I knew I was vulnerable. I mean, ultimately, yeah, as I'm sure we'll talk about it. Didn't do the sales, did yeah, I? So no, that's, a, that's the thing. You were that's good it. at that it was the sales that let you down. So let's remind yeah. us just what exactly happened. Reading some of the uh, applications here, Laura claims sales is her best skill. Yes. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, good. Enjoying it? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Good stuff. How are you getting on? Are you, like, enjoying it, yeah? Uh, yes, yeah. thank you. Good, good stuff. We have a chat, sort of test the water, let them have a look around. Before you know it, Adam's on them. <laughs> I could do you that for 180. I cannot take away anything from Adam. He did a fantastic job, but you'll probably admit that a lot of it was probably blagging. Like, uh, that's not meant yeah. to be an insult, but I mean, oh, I just felt like... blagged he... it. You reckon he was blagging some of his sales? He, he sold £2,480 worth. Yes. You sold £700. Yes. I can't really pinpoint what went wrong. Maybe you're just not a good business person. Harsh, isn't it? It's a bit cruel, eh? Yeah, it's, it's a bit, a bit tough. Because generally, actually, throughout the thing, I had to look back over your sales figures uh, over the rest of this process. Mm -hmm. You were second or third, second or third, and then this is when you were fourth. Yeah. It's like you just, it was, it. and you opened yourself up to being brought into yeah, the boardroom. I did. That's it. Yeah, which is a problem. Like, so why, what in the day? Why, why was this so difficult that night to sell? Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest with you, I did not work smart on the night. It was very much like schmoozing the customer. Yeah. So I was going around doing a little bit of schmoozing, and by the time I was getting back round to it again, I would see somebody like taking the money and, and putting out the resource sign. I'd be like, oh, it's happened again. And it just kept happening. And it's not, it's not, I just didn't work smart. I was leaving people too long. And I think as the night went on then, my confidence was dipping. I knew I was behind on sales. Wow. And I ultimately knew that, um, you know, that could, could be a problem. And yeah. were you constantly doing this thing where you, 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 I've got, I'm selling art, but I, can't, I can push, but I can't push. I've got a, you know, there's a limit to how what I can. <laughs> I think so. It's a very personal thing, art. And I think I just thought I can't make somebody take this. So I'll, 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 I'll suss it out. I'll put out the feelers and, you know, it's a, a purchase you have to think about. And I just think, um, you know, I, I wasn't really comfortable with, with forcing it on people. Now, because it's a bri it's bridal yes. wear that you normally sell, yes. of, which obviously main, the main part of the sales yes. is perfecting the, <gasps> Face, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which presumably you must do 40 times a day. That, that oh, that is lovely on you. Uh, that, that face is be a large part of that. You can't really do that with art. Uh, I don't say with that painting on you. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Uh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I actually am quite honest with my brides. Um, you know, I do are you, like. Are you? 
Yeah. That's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you think the minute you walk in that shop, it should all be you? Yeah, or the it's most a special people. day. <laughs> Regardless. I hate if somebody was honest with me when I tried something up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really give a toss what anybody else thinks. <laughs> just want to be told I look like a princess. <laughs> we do that too. We do that too. I usually have my little boy in the shop who tells people that they look like Cinderella. That usually works, so. Really? All <laughs> oh, right, it's fantastic. You should be taking him along to He's the art place. Yeah, <laughs> Like the big monster. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the selling of art. The selling of art is it is it is it difficult? It's not only a, like a simple challenge to uh, to engage people without forcing it down their throat. And... Well, from what I saw in the clips, she was going up to people. They weren't looking at art and saying, "You're having a good time, You're enjoying yourself." And uh, you know, to me, selling art is very it's very difficult. It's body language, how you approach people. Uh, you have to make sure that people are interested before you go and engage them, and don't try to close before they even look at something, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because the awkward thing, I mean, Alvin, you, you collect art, you buy art. I mean, yes, you, I look all the time. Yeah, but, but, but uh, that's the, the key, you look all the time. It's not like customer walks on the lot, he wants to buy some art. No. Uh, a lot of the time you're just looking and, and you can be pushed away very easily. And, but you also want to be seduced. Yeah. I don't need Laura to ask me, how is my health and how am I enjoying this party? I want to ask me, what do you think of this work? Yeah. Right? Do you think, are you interested in what attracts you to this? If you like this, take me over here to this other piece and show me something else. It's part of that education, that seduction. And you didn't do that. You were just sort of like there. And I didn't think it really took great advantage of your skill set. I just thought you didn't connect well with it at all. Yeah. It was like you were on a holiday in Spain. <laughs> we, was, it, was it just a tough night? I mean, because there are people arriving in randomly into, the, into this thing. The, uh... Yeah, that's it. I mean, um, the sales happened very, very quickly. And within, you know, the first 20 minutes, we probably did half our sales. Seriously, people yeah. were in, they spotted it, yeah. they were done, they were dusted. Um, and again, I think that was something that I wasn't aware was going to happen. Um, so again, just didn't click on to the right people at the right moment. Um, yeah. yeah that's that's typical of an art that's fair. It, yeah. Yeah. There's always this sort of feeding frenzy because yeah. they want to get the best things, mm -hmm. they know what they want, and they come in and buy. Yeah. And then the rest of it is, how are you, darling? Do you like this piece? I'll no. have some more in the back. I can show <laughs> you. Don't, that, no. You don't? Oh, this artist doesn't thrill you? No. Oh. You just stay here. Put, I'll give you another know. drink. Can I put it in a clip frame? That's what I want to know. No, no, no. <laughs> With the mind, would you even, I put it in a clip frame? Would you even take it out of the frame it's already in and then reframe it in a clip frame? Is that what you do with it? Well, yeah, because then I could just buy the print. I wouldn't have to buy the frame. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, clip frames are really cheap. So, yeah. And if you smash them, you can replace them quite easily. You can. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm being practical about He's... art. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Sugar said that no one was out of his comfort zone more than Adam this week. But in 48 hours, he managed to go from Philistine to fine art connoisseur. Mm. One of the questions we was asked today was, which medium does he use? Now, a medium to me is someone who's used to contact the other side. Am I getting it? I've got it! I've got it! I wasn't certain the Adam dude completely knew what he was talking about. It's the same, but it isn't the same. There's no need to dress yourself up as an arty farty. Although there's two of something, they're not always the same. So there you go. And to me, it was one of the relationships that Everything's right, but it's gone wrong. You're not always the same. That was my interpretation. Right. Tom said that no one knows Banksy's identity. That is the whole mystery of Banksy. Yeah, yeah no it's one... like the stick, innit? You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> so you're not looking for the Turner Prize then, no? Not, not yet. Yeah. More like the Turnip Prize then. <laughs> Guys, you've worked with Banksy, haven't you? I've sold a lot you've of Banksy. You've sold Banksy. Yeah. Have you met Banksy? I believe I have at times, but not knowingly. <laughs> that wasn't really a thing. I, don't, I think it's the line that, that is taking apart the whole Banksy yes. myth yeah. in one sentence. <laughs> oh, you mean like the stick? Or, yeah. <laughs> or Kendo Nagasaki, that wrestler in the 70s. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's all that is. Like the, uh... Ultimately, he was, making the, he was cutting the deals, though. That's the important thing. You know, he did very well in a one night sale. If I had a sale and nothing was going and I had no commitment to the artist, at the end of the night, I'd probably be selling like him to clear it. 
This so, could be a career for him. You bring him in at half ten yeah, at the I, end of a night. Yeah, uh, I think, I think that's like great. The, like the Terminator or something. Yeah. You just finish, <laughs> clear the room like uh, a bar. All this art. Oh, yeah. I haven't gone in ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> walk away now and don't ask any questions. The walls will be clear. Like the, uh, yeah, sales have... Uh, he, he just throws himself into these things. Yeah. Mm. yeah, he does. But you'd only buy from him one time. As an art collector, you'd buy... If he had something you really want and it was a really bargain price, you'd buy and say, boy, did I get one over on him, right? <laughs> but otherwise, you'd never come back to Adam a second time. But I do think his skill set has shown the ability to expand incredibly over the past uh, eight programs. He's done really, really well showing different sides of him. I would never believe he had that ability. The, uh, it is astonishing. He has mm. comfort zones. He has no comfort zones I at all. I think he likes people. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly outside of comfort zones. Yes. Uh, he was selling some of those when he was knocking them down by 50%. Yeah. I was half expecting like, a bag of satsumas to go in with it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have swung it for me. He's probably still selling the, like, those insects from last week. Probably has a load of those in the back of the van. He'll sell <laughs> those. He's still working on the stuff from the previous week's task. <laughs> uh, that he thinks he can sell for an extra bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> but there is, you, know, like, you do want something in the like, arcade, because you can make your own impression of it. Like, you don't you don't need somebody to come up and tell you what the painting is about. You, yes, you do. Oh, come on. You want somebody to reaffirm that what you think you, is yes. good. Oh, no, you want people to reaffirm that what you think is good, but not to get... They want, you just want somebody to go up and go, what you're thinking right now, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely right. I, I couldn't put it better than what you're thinking right now. <laughs> you and this painting belong together. And I, and I assume you would way, be in touch with the medium when yeah, you said exactly, that. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. We, have you enjoyed, enjoyed, been enjoying Adam in his, in his work? Yeah, I wasn't so keen on the meatball episode because I thought he let himself down with a lot of value tins of things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he didn't seem to know what quality food was. He didn't seem to care whether it was good quality or not. So I thought he let himself down that week. But um, I thought he picked himself up this week. I was, I was the same as Alvin said. I was surprised that he could turn his hand to this. I really didn't think he would be able to. I was impressed. OK. Now, we want to get you on to, the, uh, to who should have and who you're directly competing against, because Tom has been pretty sure-footed throughout this process, winning when project manager in week four, but he nearly came a cropper this week. We didn't get pure evil. Why didn't you get pure evil? Myself, I'm a big fan of, obviously, Space Invader from France, Banksy, Jack Ferry, over on the, obviously, west coast of his Andre the Giant and Nia Bay. Lecturing somebody and telling them how clever you are winds people up a bit, you know? Hello, is that uh, pure evil? I think I'm going to go with Sterling. I can't believe it, I'm actually shocked. I think he's mental for going with them. And what do you do then? I decide to roll the dice and go with um, James. <laughs> they were so big. People have got big wallets and even bigger front rooms. If we just sell one piece, we can win it. You sell none of this stuff. The loss of Pure Evil and the choosing of James. Two massive, big flaws. <laughs> Should you have, sh have spoken up about, about going with James Jessup? I think the issue was uh, we, we were getting a, a little bit blinded by what we were actually selling, a, a little bit greedy. I think we're thinking, oh, if we just manage to sell one, we'll absolutely, Nails, yeah. you know, yeah, romp home with the win. And um, yeah, that that just wasn't wasn't the right decision. But we, I, I don't know what it is. Me and Tom didn't seem to have an issue with the size of them, <laughs> and you clearly saw that Adam and Jade when they saw them were like, what? <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> your chimney breast, for example. Where would you put your clock? <laughs> <laughs> Have it on your wrist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they should have put a clock in one. That would have been better. Just a really it's, elaborate it's, clock. And should he put a tea maker in as well? What oh, exactly? That would be lovely, yes. How functional should it have been? Should it have been a monster with a gap for your telly? Uh, <laughs> that, uh, really? Now you're talking. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, is, is the problem with picking something like James Jessup that it's a one-night sale? And a one night sale, you're unlikely to buy, find the serious collector. I mean, he's not, he's not, not urban art in the way the others are. No, he's, he's not urban art, but also, you know, on a one night, you're not going to sell a big piece like that. Yeah. It's highly unlikely. And do you think that Tom came across as maybe, dare I say, a tiny bit arrogant at times? Uh... More than a little arrogant. He went <laughs> beyond that little boy going, I know that artist, I know that artist. He was just <laughs> all over the place. He just gave a litany of everybody he knew, from Shepard Ferry all the way through. And as an artist, you're sitting there thinking, God, he doesn't care about me, he just cares about himself. And you wonder if that sort of thing will eventually trip him up later on. He's a little, 
ahead of himself for a 23-year-old. But the way to deal with an artist, presumably, and I'm not including us as artists in this, like, but as comics, right, as performers, like, when, if we ever met somebody who came and said, oh, you're a comic, I know comedy, and then listed other comics, you go, <laughs> screw you, right? <laughs> uh, there was literally one comic I wanted to, to hear talking about, and it is me. <laughs> uh, and that's who I want to talk about. Like, do you feel it's like the same yeah, example? Yeah, yeah. I've had somebody came up to me after a gig and said, you know who else I like? I like you, and I like Bernard Mann. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... <laughs> 